Hi there, my name is Robert Ingham, and in this video I'm going to be looking at the impact of climate change on the city of Bristol. Bristol is a city in the southwest of England. It's about 100 miles west of London and 25 miles due east of Cardiff. It has a population of around 450,000 people. So the figure is rapidly growing. The city council has estimated that there will be half a million inhabitants by 2028. The city has a prosperous maritime history, but nowadays the main sources of employment are in the areas of aeronautical engineering, tourism and leisure, information technology and finance. The city is also famous as a thriving centre for all types of artistic expression. Like much of the UK, Bristol has a temperate maritime climate. July and August are the hottest months with average maximum temperatures of over 21 degrees centigrade. The coldest months are December, January and February when the average minimum temperature is lower than 3 degrees. Like many cities on the west coast of the UK, Bristol is fairly wet. The city's proximity to the Severn Estuary and the Bristol Channel means that rain is common throughout the year, with an average of 802 millimetres of rain per year. The wettest months are in autumn and winter, with October, November, December and January, all averaging more than 80 millimetres of rain per month. Bristol doesn't suffer from many extreme weather events of heat or cold. The high level of rainfall means that it does suffer from periodic and localised surface water flooding. The most significant flood event of the last century occurred in July of 1968 and was caused by a storm which deposited 130 millimetres of rainfall over the city in a 12 hour period. Over 800 properties were flooded and seven people were killed. The River Severn Estuary, which lies adjacent to Bristol, as the second highest tidal range in the world. Consequently, the River Avon, which runs through Bristol, is tidal, and Bristol has experienced several instances of tidal flooding due to storm surges. The most severe of these was in 1981 and resulted in the flooding of approximately 12 properties. A storm surge in 2014 reached a similar height, and though no private properties were damaged, it did damage the local road infrastructure. Even without any changes in climate, the City Council estimates that a thousand properties in the low-lying city centre are at risk of tidal flooding, while 26,000 properties, mainly in the higher lying north and south of the city, are at risk of surface water flooding. Consequently, the City Council spends £400,000 annually on highway drainage and watercourse maintenance, but calculates the benefits through costs averted to be over £4 million. So what are the likely changes to the climate of Bristol over the next 30 years? Well, precise figures are of course impossible, as the answer depends on the emissions path that the world follows, and on the climate impacts of these emissions, which no model is capable of calculating exactly. Instead, I'll be talking in terms of probability ranges. In particular, I'll talk about 80% probabilities, by which I mean probabilities of particular climate variables which fall within the 10 and 90% probability range as calculated by the UK CP09 observation dataset for the grid which contains Bristol. First of all, let's look at changes to mean summer temperatures in Bristol. Summer temperatures are 80% likely to rise between 1.1 and 4.2 degrees under a low emission scenario, between 1.5 and 5.2 degrees under a high emission scenario. What about mean winter temperatures? They're 80% likely to rise between 0.9 and 2.9 degrees under a low emission scenario, between 1.3 and 3.5 degrees under a high emission scenario. When it comes to summer precipitation, the model suggests that there's an 80% probability that we'll see something between a 38% decrease and a 16% increase in precipitation under a low emission scenario, and a 43% decrease and a 9% increase in precipitation under a high emission scenario. There's more certainty that winter precipitation will increase. There's an 80% probability that winter precipitation will increase by between 1 and 28% under a low emission scenario, will increase by between 3 and 37% under a high emission scenario. Here's that same information in a slightly more intuitive format.
As you'll have noticed, the ranges included in those figures are extremely wide, indicating quite a bit of uncertainty. Nonetheless, some broad conclusions can still be drawn, namely that summers in Bristol will become warmer and also probably drier, whereas winters will become warmer and wetter, and also that these changes will be more pronounced the greater the radiative forcing caused by human greenhouse gas emissions. So what will the effect of these changes be? The increase in summer and winter temperatures is likely to have both positive and negative impacts on Bristol. Tourism brings about £1.3 billion to the local economy every year. Warmer and more predictably dry summers will likely increase the popularity of the city's major events, such as the Harbour Festival, St Paul's Carnival, Bristol Pride and the Balloon Fiesta. Warmer summers will, however, put additional stresses on schools, in particular nursing homes, which has the population demographic most susceptible to heat stress, which are often located in historic properties which aren't well adapted for warmer summers and the increased probability of heat waves which they bring. That said, a recent paper by Vardu Lakis et al. 2014 suggests that the increase in heat-related mortality in the southwest of England will be more than offset by the decrease in cold-related mortality due to warmer winters under all emission scenarios, even if no adaptation measures are taken. The impact of climate change on the risk of flooding in Bristol, however, is less ambiguous. The city's locks and sluices create a floating harbour where the water level always remains constant. This has historically done an excellent job protecting the city centre from tidal flooding. However, sea level rises upwards of half a metre, which are well within the range of possibilities for the latter half of the 21st century under high emission scenarios, would compromise the city's tidal defences, especially when high tides coincide with storm surges, raising the height of the water still further. Bristol's local flood risk management strategy predicts that the number of properties at risk of flooding will rise from 1,000 currently to 2,600 in 2060 and 3,700 in 2115. and will include properties such as the Temple Meads Railway Station and the Bristol Temple Court Enterprise Zone, which is currently being developed. Insufficient data exists to properly analyse the increased risk of surface water flooding in Bristol, but it's likely that increased winter precipitation will raise the number of properties at serious risk of flooding from 26,000, where it currently stands, to also increase the likelihood of flooding for those properties which are already at risk. The impact of flooding is also likely to increase on important parts of the city's road infrastructure, such as sections of both the M32 and A4, the two main roads in and out of Bristol. While Bristol's council and residents are aware of the impact of climate change to the region and have created detailed mitigation and adaptation strategies, there's little they can do to directly reduce transboundary impacts. In particular, Bristol is surrounded by smaller but well-populated coastal towns and villages such as Portishead, Clevedon and Western Supermare, which are at increased risk of tidal flooding. The coastal plain, known as the Somerset Levels, expands to the south of Bristol and will be at increased risk of both tidal and surface water flooding, such as the area experienced in 2014. More regular and severe flooding of these areas could lead to large population increases in Bristol as residents of the southwest move to the less heavily impacted city. This in turn increases the chance of urban creep the remaining permeable areas of the city were replaced with impermeable buildings and infrastructure, which would in turn increase the risk and severity of surface water flooding in the city. Finally, Bristolians are famous for their love of cider, one potential transboundary impact of climate change which hasn't received much attention is the quantity and quality of the apple crop in Somerset, which produces most of the cider drunk in Bristol. Warmer winters may stop cider apple trees entering winter dormancy, which is necessary to produce a high yield in summer. Meanwhile, 
the increase in rains and storms over the winter months may damage the apple orchards, and for orchards which don't use commercially supplied hives, flooding may kill the local hibernating bees. Warmer, drier summers should increase insect pollination and lengthen the growing season, but cider apples which don't receive enough water tend to be small and have an unusually high sugar content. So, in conclusion, it seems that Bristol will receive a few benefits from climate change, but will also suffer some quite big negative impacts, especially if the upper range of possibilities for winter precipitation are realised over the course of the century. Bristol's location, its proximity to the sea, which has for so long been a source of strength and wealth for the city, could end up being one of its biggest issues over the next hundred years or so. Thanks for watching.